Welcome to AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. Educate. Celebrate. Connect. Arizona Hispanic Connection. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is David Parra, and our show is AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. We have, like always, great guests today, and we're, we're going to be talking about one of the most horrendous, horrible, terrible uh, things that you can ever imagine uh, happening in the 21st century. And uh, we see it all the time uh, with Equifax, with uh, companies uh, that we buy products from. It affects uh, us personally, our wallets, our identity. There's all kinds of identity theft, scams, fraud, you name it. It is horrible. It is horrible. So we're going to be addressing this matter today. Uh, we have uh, named the show My Fraud Prevention Strategy because at the end of the day, we hope that with the information that we'll be sharing today, you will end up with good uh, concepts and good uh, uh, actions that you can take to develop your fraud prevention strategy. But before you even feel the need to develop it, we're gonna, we're gonna present to you a lot of data, a lot of you know, scams that are happening in, in our country and it is horrible. It is very, very horrible. And, and I think it is more so because with the internet, now the whole, the, the, the game is being played at a different realm. It's not uh, the typical people breaking into your house. You know, sometimes they break in, they take the TV and it ends up there, right? But now, you know, if they get your social security card, if they tap into your information for your bank, your credit cards, and your house, and I mean, it is. it can be very, very, very difficult. Let me start by uh, introducing uh, our guest today, and I'll go from um, this side and go around. Linda Vitale. Linda Vitale is it's a, an AARP volunteer, and uh, I have to say, Linda, that we consider you the top presenter on this issue, so thank you very much, first of all, for being with us. I know it's early, but... Uh, uh, we really, we really need your expertise, and thank you for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, and then we have uh, Lenny Estrada. Lenny Estrada uh, works for the Area Agencies on Aging on a program that is very, very uh, perhaps new to many people. It's called the Senior <laughs> Medicare Patrol, and this there's a lot of fraud uh, in Medicare, and he's going to be helping us to understand what this program is all about and how the community can participate. Welcome, Lenny, to our show. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. And then we have, for the second time, actually, uh, the Attorney General is being represented for the second time. Uh, we have Lucia Arteaga, and she is, again, with the Attorney General. And uh, last time we had you here for the advanced directives, but now we have you in the realm of fraud and scams and what uh, the Attorney General's office does in terms of protecting Arizona. Welcome, uh, Thank Lucia. You. Well, this is, I consider this a very, very important show because I know that there isn't one person out there that either has been affected directly or knows someone who has been affected. I personally, my wife's identity uh, was stolen and she believes it, was, it happened at a clinic the credit card, the social security, and then they started opening accounts and buying all kinds of stuff. And it, it took us at least, at least two weeks to kind of get things under control. So it is very, very, very uh, difficult. So uh, Linda, I want to ask you a couple of things first. And first is what is your general uh, perspective about this problem? And then I, I'm, let's get to the meat of this thing and then help us understand what happened with the Equifax problem. Okay, in terms of it being a problem, um, it's a growing problem um, exponentially every single year. We had over a thousand data breaches even last year and we're up to over 700 this year as of June so far. So we're gonna break the record. We seem to break the record mm. every year. Wow. 
um, in terms of scams, fraud, but mostly a lot of this data breach stuff. And the Equifax data breach affected almost 60% of the adult population. Hmm. So 140. Hundred and it was one hundred and forty five now revised right, up right. from one hundred and forty three. Yes. So it affects a lot of people. So on, what happened there? They <coughs> breached into the system and they and they got what? They got names, addresses, dates of birth, social security numbers, which is the the holy grail right. for the fraudsters to have right, the social right. security number. And uh, now, the, what can you give us just a brief explanation of this credit? Uh, bureaus bureaus that well, there are three of them and what are the, the what what is their function um there are three of them yes and equifax was the one that got the data right. breach and their function basically is those are the companies depend on them to be able to see if you're credit worthy so they hold a lot of personal information mm. for everyone all the accounts you have every time you've ever taken out a loan or a credit card or a mortgage And so they hold a lot of data, and when a company wants to know that if they want to give you a loan, if you're credit worthy, the companies depend on them to give them that information. That's where the credit score comes from, is in fact. And I understand that they literally sell this information in terms of if companies that are interested in, in a person's credit score, for example, Correct. whether they have they are credit worthy, yes. they go to these companies and pay a little fee to get uh, they that get information. A, they get money every time someone makes an inquiry right. to look at your records. Now, these are not government agencies, but they are, you could say, approved by the government. Is that a, the right term, perhaps? approved or monitored, supervised, yeah, regulated? They're not as heavily regulated as okay. they as people feel they should okay. be. Okay. But it, it was a big problem. So now uh one hundred and forty three million people's uh, personal information potentially are yes. out there. Mm -hmm. And we'll come back to you, Linda, to 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 help us uh, as to what uh, steps we can take. Okay. Uh, I already took some steps, and it is pretty scary when when you yeah. check to see if you're the lucky ones, quote unquote, <coughs> yeah. in the wrong way, uh, and then you find out that you were. Yeah, Now, I was affected. Uh, yes, too. Lucia. In terms of the attorney general's office, and I am so sorry that I, I even I'm afraid to even pronounce his name because I always <laughs> have a different. What is the the name? Mark Brnovich. Yes, yeah. I I have a little bit of a different the last name mark is no problem uh, what uh, how did this equifax thing hit the attorney general's office if it did Well, definitely. Usually when there's a new scam out there, uh, people call our, our public number. Um, and that's kind of when we notice, okay, there's an increase even here in Arizona, obviously. Um, but people are just very concerned what they should do or what are the steps that they can take. Just, you know, anything that may help them, uh, prevent them from becoming a victim of identity. Theft. Did you get a lot of calls uh, on this particular issue or not too many? We did. did. No, we we definitely did. Some days more than others, but mm -hmm. um, I think that when people were just looking at the news, they also were concerned, um, even still not knowing if they were a victim or not. Mm, right. But we did get a, an increase in call. Perfect. Now, how do you feel working for the Attorney General? This is the Procurador de Justicia. Sí. I believe that's how they <laughs> call him in Spanish. Uh -huh. El Procurador de Justicia, uh -huh. which who is basically the, the person in charge of making sure that justice is served, that, uh, that everybody frauds follows and the law. everybody yeah. follows the law, etc. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a big, big, uh, uh, or a key function in, in, in government. We do have a, a national attorney general Absolutely. and then we also have a state one yes. which is mark Bernovich. there you go <laughs> <laughs> and lenny let me come to you um uh, we're kind of uh, going around because uh, how serious uh, how uh, big is the problem with medicare fraud well let me tell you in the last figures that we had was in 2013 From Medicare fraud alone, there were $62 billion, $500 million worth of fraud hmm. committed. That's a ton of money. That is. A and ton and of money. How, does that, uh, how does that money, how is that money charged wrongly or fraudulently to Medicare? Usually due to um, individual beneficiaries that uh, allow their their personal identification to be uh, to be given taken by somebody else so also identity theft you could that say that is exactly the okay. words identity theft somebody steal their identity 
unfortunately, what happens with Medicare, the Medicare card has as a rule your social security number. And so that is very important. With that, with that, na- with that number and uh, your name and maybe your date of birth or something like that, they can, uh, they can procure benefits, health benefits, in your name. That's amazing. Now, for, for many, many decades uh, or several decades, the Social Security number was the Medicare uh, card number. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Obviously, they didn't have the same issues then that we have now. So the the CMS is fixing that, correct? They're already uh, into the process of changing the number so that that it's no longer the Social Security. How are we doing with that? That's correct. The the Center for Medicare Services is... uh, implementing a new system where there will be approximately 15 numbers and letters for a new Medicare card. Okay. They will no longer use the Social Security number, and it would be very close to impossible to duplicate. Good. And so <laughs> it would be hard hard for anyone to try to, uh, to steal that identity from anyone. So from, from, from as of today and in the past, anybody who stole a Medicare card, they had the Social Security number, the name, and most likely uh, the, the date of birth. Because isn't like the Part A kind of like related, the date that they... The, the, Pretty close. To pretty it. close. Yeah. yeah. The part A indicates more or less the year that you were born. That you were born. And yeah. so, uh, doing a little bit of a quick investigation, a lot of people can find your date of birth no matter what. Right. And the point is that uh, is is open. Uh, people uh, very openly give this information. Uh, the, the, there was a time when we could trust people. They were the age that that we recipients of Medicare. Um, grew up, we trusted people. We never locked the car. We never locked the house. We walk away and left things the way they are. You can't do that anymore. So, Lenny, you're Medicare age, correct? Correct. Okay. How 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 much does fraud worry you on a daily basis? How concerned or where are you of fraud on a daily basis? Very much so, because I have had people call me. As a rule, I get maybe one to two calls a week. Mm of someone that either has been uh, abused or defrauded uh, from a Medicare uh, provider. So that's basically, as part of your job, you get those complaints from the general public. Correct. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, we, we know that there's fraud all over. I mean, I already told you that I was my wife was a victim of fraud. I mean, and it hits home real, real close once it happens to you, right? And there's med- fraud in Medicare. Now, uh, just a quick question, Lenny. You mentioned that the, the, the people's uh, uh, you know, identity uh, is stolen. But how about, are, they doc- are there doctors that also commit fraud in billing Medicare for people who maybe, maybe don't even exist for or wrongly? Services or for services that were not provided. Is that a big problem? Very big problem. Very, mm. very, very mm. big problem. So doctors... Who commit fraud by using codes, the wrong codes uh, of, of services that were provided to a person, and perhaps uh, saying they serve someone who maybe is no longer alive, and they they still have the the Medicare information, etc. That is true. That is true. The largest the largest ones are from drugs, or hospital. You mean prescription drugs? Correct. Okay. And um, uh, from hospitals that that. Uh, enter the wrong codes. Mm. Sometimes it's an error, sometimes it's mistakes, sometimes... <clears throat> On purpose. We won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there's the durable medical equipment, which uh, mm. refers to uh, walking canes, uh, wheelchairs, and things of that nature. I see a lot of commercials of, of people encouraging Medicare beneficiaries to, oh, th- th- does your back hurt? You can, be, you can get a wheelchair for free. Are you, is that what you're talking about, that exactly. sometimes people may be encouraged to buy something they really don't need? Exactly. That, that, that plus providers that know or can get information from uh, beneficiaries and bill in Medicare for items mm. that were not sold to them. Amazing. Or Amazing. prescribed by the doctors. Definitely. All right. We are clo- getting close to uh, our first break. Uh, uh, we will start 
to uh, ask uh, Linda next uh, segment to help us as to what we can do if, uh, and actually to, now we have to do, we have to take some action with the Equifax breach. There's no doubt about it. At the very least, there's a website that you need to check to see if you are, uh, if you were part of that list. So stay with us. This is AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. We'll be right back. Welcome to AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. Educate. Celebrate. Connect. Arizona Hispanic Connection. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. This is AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. We are addressing a horrible issue today. It is fraud, scams. We're going to be talking about the con artists. We're going to ta be talking about how you could develop your own fraud prevention strategy. And as we go, you, I'm sure you'll be picking up some items here and there. Let's go <clears throat> back to Equifax, uh, Linda, because I think this is the, the most recent uh, issue that we have in the country actually it's not a, a yeah. state thing it's a country thing so help us uh, walk us through uh what you would recommend and not only you but what it is recommended and i actually did it already okay. uh, that every person should do to to uh, you know as a, as a result of this uh data breach okay well the, the first thing you should do is place a credit freeze and a credit freeze is basically that you have to do it with all three of the credit bureaus and what a credit freeze does is it blocks your credit file from being accessed by anyone except yourself. So that's the main thing. And So um, basically, they stole your Social Security. There's the likelihood that they are going to try to open credit under your name. Right. So you want to you wanna put a freeze to that. And, and how do you do that again? Um, you would have to contact all three credit bureaus. You can do it online or you can call them and do it over the phone or on paper. It costs five dollars per credit bureau to do, and it's very important because it locks the bad guys from accessing your account and being able to get credit in your name. Now you once did that, and then you needed to uh, needed your you needed credit, and the, and the, your credit wasn't available, so you had to unfreeze it first. Yes. Can you explain? You that? can temporarily lift the freeze <clears throat> if someone needs to access your credit file in order for you to open up a credit card or get a loan or take out credit of some kind. And then it automatically gets frozen back again once the time expires that you have lifted the freeze. So credit freeze is like the number one thing we all need to do. Uh, Absolutely. And so now, is, is how long does the freeze uh, last? It lasts forever until you lift until it or, lift or it. take it out completely. Perfect. Yeah. What's another thing that we could do you in addition to that? You need to automa check your credit report right credit away. Report. And make sure nothing's there because this data breach happened four or five months ago and before it was announced. So the criminals have had, you know, a fun time being able to do a lot of things before the public even was aware of this. Yeah. So you need to check your credit report at annualcreditreport.com. You can go to credit report for free um, and make sure that there's nothing there that doesn't belong there. Annualcreditreport.com. Yes. And you can, there, the three companies by law have to provide you one uh, report every quarter no every year every year once so a year. you could actually uh, ask one from one company and in four months as for the second company and another four months as for the third company that's is that correct. accurate yes that so that way would you, you viewed your credit report all year long so you now, do one in january i i recommend one in january check again one of the other credit bureaus in May, and then a third one in September. I've heard you present, and you even say that you, you need to put it in your calendar, right? Yeah, I write dates. it on my calendar so I don't forget. <laughs> We're now, all so busy. It takes time to do that, Linda. I was checking with my wife, you know, have we done this, have we done that? And it, it takes time to, to, to carry out your fraud prevention strategy. I mean, you first you kind of have to make it, but then even when you make it, it takes time to implement. Lenny? Do you do this by telephone, or do you have to do it in writing? You can call them over the phone, but then they base... I, I've never done it over the phone, so I don't exactly know the process, but from what I've heard from other people, then you have to do it on paper. They take the information, and then you have to send in your ID and all of that stuff. 
So number one, uh, a, a credit freeze. Credit freeze. <clears throat> and then get your credit reports Report. every four months that you can monitor to right. make sure that nothing's in those reports <clears throat> that is not yours. Now keep in mind that a credit freeze only protects you from future people right. trying to get credit in for the future. It does not affect your existing accounts. Right. So you still have to monitor your own reports, your own bank accounts, financial accounts, checking and savings. You've got to check and make sure all your bills that there's nothing there that doesn't belong. What is a a fraud alert? A fraud alert is just basically just a little red flag that sits on your credit report that says the victim might be, I mean the the, the client might be a victim of identity theft and the agencies are supposed to call you um, to not if someone applies for credit, they're supposed to contact you to verify. But the complaint there is that the companies have not been doing that. And now, a fraud alert only lasts 90 days, so you'd have to keep doing renewing it every 90 days. Now the uh, Equifax uh, did something to kind of amend, if you will, uh, those people that were affected. I believe they offer a one-year monitoring uh, service. Uh, are you able to just to say a few words about that? Yes, the name of the company is called Trusted ID Premier, and they're offering one free credit monitoring. But what they've had such an onslaught of people applying for that that they are staggering that. So if you go online and try to apply, they're going to give you a date that you can actually apply. Um, so whatever date that is, you've got to put it on your calendar and then go back in and apply for it on the date that they assigned you. Um, and they are offering one free credit monitoring for one year and you, you've got to apply before November 21st. Now I went to Equifax security 2017.com. Yes. Uh, do you recommend that they go through that page and then from there go to apply for that service uh, service? Because that's exactly what I did. Right. That's so exactly so right. please uh, go to EquifaxSecurity2017.com, and then you're going to check to see if your number uh, was or your information was compromised, and then you're going to be led through that page to to apply for the one year monitoring. That's and correct. I remember my wife was doing it, and she says, "Dear, they're asking me for my social security number. Should I give it to them?" I says, "Yes, go ahead and give it to them." Now, what is a, there could also be a, a red flag about the Equifax thing about uh, uh, you know uh, the wrong or fraudulent websites that could uh, uh, pop up in your computer, correct? Which yeah, we have there to was be a little careful. concern at one point because the, the they. Equifax made a special website just for that, mm. and it wasn't the actual Equifax website, and that was a known scammer website or something, so there was a bit of confusion there about that. You know, I that's have, been resolved. Sorry. I have to say that this this few steps that you just mentioned are like the hardest things to do in my experience, and I, I, I don't think I'm different than many people. For you to take the time and really go to your computer and go to Equifax.com and go to TransUnion.com and go to Expedian.com. It's, it, it really takes some discipline to do. And then especially if you're going to put it in your calendar and do it every four months. Now you're smiling. What, what's I'm that smiling smile about? because it takes a lot less effort to do that than it does to protect, I mean, to, you know, deal with the after effects of identity. That's definitely. I mean, we it, it, two weeks of, of crazy, crazy back and forth for us when my wife's identity was stolen. So it is it is the thing to do. I'm just saying that it, it you just have to do it, period. Yeah, There's you no, have no, to be very diligent yeah. and protect your mm -hmm. identity. I also want to mention there is another uh, scam going on where people are going to call you and they're going to pretend that they're from Equifax. They're mm. saying, hey, I can verify your information over the phone right now. Um, I just need your social security number mm. and everything else. And people think that it's really them. But Equifax already uh, put it out there that they're not calling anyone. They're right. not going to be calling you. So that is definitely uh, a scammer just trying to get your information. Yeah, I think they're too busy right now to be calling anybody right. yes. and they'll be phishing emails as well that's true representing that true. equifax but and they're they, imposters exactly and with emails like that i mean it they can even call you by name they can uh even they may say okay click on this link um and it, it may even have their logo it's going to look real but you just need to look for the little red flags like right. there's probably a typo or if you look where it's actually from the email is just 
you could tell that it's not really from Equifax. Yeah. Like you just have to look at those little signs. You know, let's go back a little bit to the fraud regarding Medicare because since Medicare CMS is going to be changing now, <clears throat> excuse me, the numbers from the Social Security numbers to a different number system, there's also some fraud going on on that that people are calling and asking, you know, kind of telling them, hey, you know, your Social Security, your Medicare card number is going to be changed. And then would you verify this and this information? So be, be very careful with that as well. Very common. Um, what people need to know and understand is that the government, no government entity will call you over the telephone for any reason. So those calls that you get uh, claiming that they are from uh, either the IRS or Medicare or whatever, just hang up the telephone. Don't get upset. Don't ask them any questions. Don't, don't just hang up the phone because the, the, the government will never call you. They will send you a letter. Right. That's number one thing that they need to do. And then they need to make sure that they protect their identity. The same thing that, the same way that you protect the credit card norma, uh, from your wallet, you need to protect Medicare card number also. Yes. And keep in mind that the majority of the people that may have any identity theft, serious problems, it may take as long as seven years to correct all the issues that you may have had encountered. Thank you. You know, we're going, getting close to our second break, and I just want to say the following. There are different a a agencies and entities that are fighting fraud, and I just want to say that AARP is one of them as well. We do have a, an effort called the Fraud Watch Network, and that's where Linda and I met. She's a volunteer. She, does, she spends many hours doing education for ARP for free. I mean, that's amazing. Thank you, Linda, for that. She's a volunteer with ARP. She donates her time, and she's just an excellent uh, educator on this issue. And uh, so if you want to, if you want a place to get information about what's happening with fraud, we strongly recommend you to write this uh, this uh, website down. Uh, it's called fraudwatchnetwork.org. As simple as that, fraudwatchnetwork.org. And this is a website that AERP started uh, several years ago when we launched this effort to to educate communities on, on this horrible issue of fraud. And if you go to that page and would like to subscribe to receive alerts, because the AARP is also monitoring fraud, and they send alerts uh, twice a month. Uh, and then there's all kinds of information as things happen. I mean, we, we put out a video on Equifax. So if you had been receiving the, uh, the alerts from AARP Fraud Watch Network, uh, you would have gotten that uh, uh, video telling you the steps that you need to take. So it is extremely uh, useful to be connected to that. So if you want to be connected to this network and get this alert, this information about fraud, remember, fraudwatchnetwork.org. Linda, uh, do you recommend that? Absolutely. I get those alerts every couple of weeks, and that helps me keep abreast of what's coming out, what's new and um, you can also have, there's an interactive map on the website where you can see what's happening in your state. You can read other people's stories, report your own experience. It's a wonderful website with lots of resources, too. Once again, fraudwatchnetwork.org uh, with AARP, and you'll get lots of information about this issue of fraud. We are going uh, on break uh, once again. We'll be right back. This is AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. Welcome to AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. Educate. Celebrate. Connect. Arizona Hispanic Connection. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. This is AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. We are talking about fraud and scams. The name of the show is My Fraud Prevention Strategy. And I really hope that this show helps every one of us to uh, become more aware of fraud and to develop 
the fraud prevention strategy. Let's uh, go through a list of common scams and then just jump in as we go. Uh, there is one that is called uh, the tech support scams. What is the tech support scam? Um, well, usually someone impersonating um, Microsoft or a tech support company that tells you that there's a problem, there's a, a virus on your computer, and they basically try to talk you into letting them help you eradicate the virus, which is not really there. Uh, they charge you money for that. They send you to a website and have you download a program that's supposed to get rid of the virus, but actually what it does is it, it, it infects your computer with malware. Definitely fraud. Yes. Uh, because they, how would they know if that your computer has a virus? So this is the so-called tech support scams. How about the disaster-related charity fraud? Yeah, so I actually was just reading about that not too long ago with all the hurricanes going on um, you know these scammers are calling people saying they're from a certain organization that they're going to donate uh, to help people that have victims of, of these natural disasters and of course they're just playing with people's emotions but a lot of the times it's not really going to them you know the money is not really going to the people to to be held it's it, it's just a scammer trying to get your money and playing with your emotions and you know when the when the disaster hits your heart is kind of soft and you're you feel sorry you want to find a way to help Absolutely. and that's they prey on that and they they open up shops so to speak and they exactly. come to people to ask for money and yeah. most of the times it's either fake or the great majority of the money doesn't go towards the cause and they right. keep Right. It, right. Right. So we we suggest that you know just go onto their website. If they're calling you, just just let them know that you um, are going to look their organization up online, and you're going to just you know do it that way versus over the phone because you never know. There are are scammers who could actually do something called spoofing. So you're relying on your caller ID. You're you're saying, mm. okay, well I looked mm. up this phone number. Right. Right. This phone number is really from this organization. Right. But because they did that, it just made it seem like they're from what's the, the 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 word again spoofing spoofing whoa those are yeah, technical yeah. terms don't believe what you see on your call <laughs> so they're able ID. to change the number that appears on the ID, yes. phone id yes. amazing and, and sorry i just i got yeah. to mention like sometimes they'll even call you saying that it's from your bank they'll tell you oh these are the last four numbers of your card mm. can you verify the other numbers and you're you're looking at the number and your caller id it looks like it's from your bank but we suggest uh to people like you know what let them know that you're you have to head out and that you'll call them so use the number that's on the back of your card and just verify that it was them perfect uh you know a lot of times people go to the internet to find a sweetheart right is is there, are there uh, scams related to the so-called sweetheart scams and how does that happen mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of those, and basically the idea there is that someone convinces you that they're the love of your life, mm -hmm. and then eventually manipulates you into making you believe that they need help, and usually the help that they need is financial, and they convince you to send them money. So that the bottom line, they, they're going to ask you for money. They're going to ask you one. for money. Now, a very popular one, and I'm not even sure if this hits the Latino community as much, but it's called a grandparent scam. Have you heard of the grandparent oh, yes. scam? What is that? So that one, it, and you know what? It's not even really the grandparent scam anymore. Right. We call it the friends and family scam. Okay, because I agree. Because it's not just to seniors, it's mm -hmm. to anyone. And uh, when I go out to give these presentations, I always, I always ask people, all right, raise your hand if you received a call that... Uh, it's saying, oh, grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, whatever. Um, I am stuck in so-and-so road. My car broke down, and I need my, well, money right away. Right. Um, I need you to wire me money. And they'll call you by your name. And a lot of people have a lot of relatives that maybe they haven't spoken to in a very mm. long time. Mm. Um, and, and they're like, oh, of course I'm going to help you. But here's the thing. This is where you know the the red the red flags are at where they say you I need you to wire me money right because you never know where that money is gonna go right. and the other thing is they'll say please don't tell anyone or don't tell mm -hmm. my parents because I'm on spring break and that's, I wasn't that's supposed the to be doing that red flag right there exactly and okay. the other thing is saying that it's an emergency and that mm -hmm. I I need I need help right away right uh, people have told me you know what. They, they they actually play play along with it. They say, uh, I don't have any grandkids or I don't have any <laughs> right, family right. members that live over there. So they play along with it. But there's definitely been a lot of people that do wire that money. And you usually, when you wire money, you 
don't really ever see it back. Right. Yeah, the, now, uh, go just ahead, Linda. one little thing. The, the advice there in any of those friends and family or grandparents scam uh, is to always ask the, well, try to verify if that person really is in trouble if you can. And if not, always ask or have some kind of a, a, a question that you could ask them that only they will know the answer to. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, never believe that you won far, uh, foreign lottery. That that I mean, you, it's illegal yes. to play a lottery in other countries, and if you never play, most likely you did not win. So don't believe those uh, those uh, offerings that nope. t tell you that you won the lottery. Yeah. Um, the debit card scams, Linda, and I know this is a big big item on fraud. The debit card scams. Um, well, debit cards and the card skimmers. Right. If you can address both. The skimming is 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 really really bad, especially at gas stations in the state of Arizona. Um, a card could get skimmed anywhere, but it's where it's the little a device is placed in where you slide your card in and out when you purchase gas, or you go to a store or a restaurant and. The problem with debit cards is that they are directly tied to your checking account. So if it gets skimmed, if it gets stolen, compromised in some way, then your checking account could be cleared out, mm. emptied out completely. And if you don't report it right away, you have you will lose money. With You have two days. Otherwise, between two days and 60 days, you're responsible for the first 500, and then after that, unlimited amount of money could be lost. Less protections that with credit cards, correct? Right, credit cards, you have much more uh, protection. So definitely it is it is better, it is recommended that people use credit cards versus debit cards. Absolutely, especially online if you're buying anything um, and also recurring charges if you're buying something where you're going to be billed every month or a free trial offer, don't use your debit card or you'll find yourself with no money in your checking account eventually. Online banking. A lot of people seem to be afraid of online banking. What's your take on that, anyone? Well, uh, I do online banking. I love it. I, I think I can, it, it's very, it works very well for me. I can go to, to my account anytime I want during the yes. day, three times a day, whenever to check and make sure everything's going well. Whereas if you do it on paper, you're going to have to wait a, a month to get your exactly. statement. Yeah, so a lot... Online banking, at least with your personal checking account, savings account, we tell people, make sure you're always checking it just to make sure that right. there are unauthorized charges. Not only that, but if there's a payment that you have to make online, um, just make sure that that the the very beginning, which is HTTP, um, that if you're making a payment or some sort of transaction like that, that there ha is actually an S after HTTP. HTTP. P S. S for secure. S is for secure, okay. correct. And a lot of the times now you will actually see uh, a padlock. Mm. So it's a lock, meaning it's secured. The other thing that you may also notice that is that the address bar is actually in green. Green mm. is good. Red, it's not recommended that you make any sort of transaction. The other thing, people still don't feel comfortable using their debit card that way. That's fine if you have to make a, uh, an, an online transaction that way. Use the prepaid card, you mm. know, because it's better to lose those $50, for example, than, you know, giving out your information. Right. And uh, another thing I would like to mention on, on skimmers, yeah, these, these skimmers, you may be able to notice them sometimes, but they are getting smaller and wow. smaller. Mm -hmm. So somebody walks in, in, into the... the, the the gas station and literally ins inserts it where mm -hmm. you insert the card. Absolutely. And yes. it's a reader, basically. It's a reader. They receive all that bank information. That's amazing. Um, and people used to be told, you know, go inside into the gas station. But sometimes those are inside the gas station as well. Amazing. Yeah. And not only that, but gas stations are getting better. Like maybe you may notice some red stickers over the, 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 the gas station machine and it, if it's been tampered, if it's been opened, it will actually say on the sticker, void. It mm. is white. So okay. make sure you're just checking for those things and make sure you're moving the the, the skimmer where you're entering your card to make sure it's like stable and not. So when you loose. insert it, do, do your best to, to observe and see yeah. that, yes. that nothing weird or different is, right. is there. Correct? And the last yeah. thing I want to mention on that is if you are using your debit card, you know, it, it may help putting uh, running it as credit just because it takes a little bit longer mm. for those those okay. monies to move. Yeah. Um, I would also say, as far as online banking, to make sure that you use very secure, long passwords. Mm. 
Make sure you mix it up with numbers Good. and symbols Good and advice. lower, yeah. uppercase letters, things like that. Um, and also, if you can, uh, try to ask your, your bank if they will do what's called two-factor authentication, mm -hmm. where you'll get an email or a text message right. with a code so They'll they know that it's you. with you through a text message, perhaps, right. or an email, correct? Right. So you can't access your account just if they have your number. Good. Good they advice. have to send you a code, and you put the code in before you can even, uh, you know, get online. Beware of the IRS calls. They yes. do not call to threaten you and, and to tell you that you owe thousands of dollars that they're going to send the police and they're going to arrest you. They are scams. Don't believe those. Uh, we, we need to move on. I mean, there, there's just endless. Yeah, there's just endless, uh, all yeah. kinds of ways by which the uh, con artists are, are operating these yeah. days. So we need to be very careful, be, uh, be it by, uh, through our phone, uh, our emails, our text messages, our computers, etc. Oh, one we didn't mention did is the Wi-Fi, Linda, real quick, before we go on the next break. The, uh, wi the public Wi-Fi. Public Wi-Fi is not private. Wi-Fi can go through walls. So never put personal information into your computer or buy anything or, you know, go online on a private website like your online bank banking or anything when you're using public Wi-Fi. Right. And the other thing I just wanted to say, in general, most scams and fraud involve impersonation mm. with a caller or the email or somebody at your door or some online website that you're on is not real. It's mm. a fake spoof call or web, website. So, you know, that's the first thing is you just not to believe what you see on your caller ID and don't necessarily believe, you know, uh, an email that you see, even if it looks authentic or um, somebody calling you pretending that they're from a charity or the IRS. And a lot of the, the, sec the two most common tactics used in any scam is fear and intimidation and impersonation where they're pretending to be someone they're not. And we're going to address a little bit of the con artist's tactics in the next segment. Uh, remember that a good place to start is at fraudwatchnetwork.org. This is an AARP website that we opened up to offer information on fraud. So again, fraudwatchnetwork.org. You're invited to visit it and sign up to receive alerts. We're going on our last break. This is AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. We'll be right back. Welcome to AARP, Arizona Hispanic Connection. Educate. Celebrate. Connect. Arizona Hispanic Connection. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. This is AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. We are talking about fraud, and the name of the uh, show is My Fraud Prevention Strategy. We all need a prevention strategy. If not, we're going to be caught in the middle of something that is not going to be good. So before we move to the uh, prevention strategy, which I really want us to focus on this last segment, I want to ask you, Linda, if you can help us. In the presentation that AARP does on fraud, there is a, a concept called Ether. Yes. And again, this is the con artists are people who were caught and then they were willing to confess and to reveal the secrets, right? Mm -hmm. And they use these boiler rooms where they, they are actually making the phone calls. And, and be careful. These are very sophisticated. Uh, they have a whole industry, if you will, of, of committing fraud. But, but they, they manage, they use a, a concept called Ether. What is that? Ether is a heightened emotional state. It's a state of mind that you get into, that they manipulate you into, um, in order for you to, to convince you to, to do whatever it is they want you to do. They get you excited. They play with your emotions. We all have very powerful emotions, fear, greed, urgency, love pride, loneliness, and all mm. of those are manipulated and used to get you in that heightened emotional state. And when you're in that state, you're not thinking clearly anymore and you're not making rational decisions. And you know, it, regrettably, this is something that happens even in non quote unquote fraudulent sales. You know, even in sales today, the concept is there of getting us into emotion, you know, into a heightened emotional state to get us to do things that we really might not want to do. So it's the same 
principle. I'm not saying that everything is fraudulent out there, but I'm just saying that the concept of getting us into an, a heightened emotional state, it operates every single day. So we have to be careful. In the prevention strategies, one of the things that we tell people is never make decisions in a heightened emotional state. We have got to uh, be careful of not making decisions when you're when you find yourself in that uh, situation. We need to ask more questions than you answer. You need to read about the product before buying it. Uh, don't let the salesperson control you. You have got to either hang up or you have to control the conversation. There's just this strategy. So again, never make buying decisions in a heightened emotional state. Ask more questions than you answer. Read about the product before buying. Don't let the salesperson control you. Linda, you already told us about uh, making sure that we, uh, the, you know, sign up to get the credit reports, uh, to get the, the, the to establish the credit freeze yes. and the fraud alerts if possible. Mm -hmm. Those are extremely critical because they, they go into our social security number, which is uh, a very unique ID that we will all have. Yes, and the the Equifax breach with the with the uh, social security numbers out there, you've really got to be extra diligent now because. Um, with the social security number, a criminal or a scammer can do a lot of damage, not only from regular credit um, identity theft, but also medical identity theft mm. as well. Right. With your, you know, anything, your Medicare card or your medical regular ID. Uh, criminal ID theft, child ID theft is going to happen, tax ID theft now, because that social security number is the key to your identity. So you We have need to, to monitor our bills and financial accounts regularly. Absolutely. I mean, sometimes I go... Mm. Three weeks. I I always ask my wife, how have you checked it? When when did you check it last? And then I go in and check it. So we, you know, you kind of have to make sure that you're not being charged on your credit card things that you didn't buy. Uh, Lenny, I know we're running out of time. The the senior Medicare patrol. How can people get involved to fight this kind of fraud that that is robbing Medicare of, of billions of dollars? Basically, trying to um, instill and the beneficiaries to look at the explanation of benefits or the Medicare summary notice and make sure that what they read is actually what they got. Otherwise, call the provider or call our office at the area, you see an agent, and we will try and figure out what's going on. So Medicare sends a summary of benefits, even if people are on original Medicare or Medicare Advantage, they still do, or only if they're on original Medicare? Only on original. Only Medicare. on original. Correct. So bottom line here is that we have to pay attention to the types of services that we're getting in doctor's offices and make sure that that's what is being recorded and what be what is being charged for, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. If you are if, if you are a female and you get a, an a explanation of benefits and says that you have had a circumcision, <laughs> there is something wrong. Right. You mean you, that that this happens sometimes? Oh yes. <laughs> wow. Oh yes. And and I don't think I don't think it's done on purpose. Uh, although a lot of a lot of abuse and fraud is done on purpose, but this probably was a mistake. They just used the wrong code. And so, but it happens. So this is a very important program that CMS established back in the 90s to basically help people to get involved to f fight uh, fraud, correct? Absolutely. What I do is they, they are trying to uh, empower beneficiaries to look for, detect, and report abuse and fraud. Mm. And by the way, if you're listening, uh, please know that next week the show will be on Medicare. We're going to explain the ABCDs of Medicare. Please join. Uh, Lucia, um, prevention strategy. I mean, what other things can, can we advise our uh, viewers and, and those listening by radio the, uh, as to the uh, prevention yeah. strategy? Well, there's definitely a lot uh, that we all can do. First thing is just inform yourself uh, once in a while whenever you you have time to look up what, what scams are happening in your community. Not only that, but in your state and then nationwide as well. Uh, making sure that you're not giving any personal information over the phone. Uh, be careful with door-to-door -door solicitors as well. Uh, be very careful, even if you're like at a place like a dealership and you're signing a contract. Make sure it's a close and that it's a closed contract that nothing can change later on because mm. they can call you and even though you sign the contract, they can be calling you and telling you, "Oh, something changed. They came back." Uh, just 
if, if you have any doubt and you suspect that you have been a victim of identity theft or you know a, a scam do the complaint with our office because mm, it's possible good. that someone's already have that same problem before with that company. Um, and the last thing I want to mention is shred your documents, right. even your junk mail. We actually will be good, having good. a shred-a-thon coming up. And for details, people can just look on our website, which is www.azag.gov. Oh, that's an easy one. Yeah. Say mm -hmm. it again. Azag.gov. Ooh, A-Z-A-G. <laughs> Dot gov. Right. So that to to access the website, and yes. I'm sure that there's a ton of information there, uh, even re regarding fraud. Exactly. We have our and what to do if you're a victim of fraud. Exactly. You, I mean, like I said, you can file your complaint there. You can uh, request a publication, which we have publications on identity theft. We have the senior toolkit and the consumer scams. Yeah. yeah just you know, uh, as part of the efforts that AARP is uh, doing to uh, educate on fraud, we have these two publications. One is called the Con Artist's Playbook and the AARP Watchdog Alert Handbook. If you go to the website, uh, fraudwatchnetwork.org, you can actually download these publications. And there is a ton of information. And especially at the end of one of the publications, this one, the AARP Watchdog Alert Handbook, there's a lot of resources, you know, so for you to check yeah. if a charity organization is legitimate, the credit reports and all that kind of good stuff that do not call registry. So, so many uh, good information. The AGs is here. Mm -hmm. So please go to the fraudwatchnetwork.org, sign up to receive alerts, and you will be uh, getting lots of good information. And, and, and more than anything, you will be you will stay connected so that you don't just for, you listen to something and you forget it, but you exactly. constantly, at least twice a month, you will be getting these emails alerting you of fraud that is uh, happening because the sure thing is that this is gonna continue to happen. So prevention, prevention, prevention is, a, a, is the key. Linda, any other uh, thoughts about prevention? Um, monitoring all your accounts is very, very important right now. Always wait 24 hours before making any important decisions. And make sure that you have unique passwords for all of your online accounts. Don't use the same passwords twice. Um, and basically, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Right. And, you know, a lot of times that when we go and make purchases, uh, again, the heightened emotional state, we like the shining car, the color, the clothes, the this and the that. My philosophy is always to go to a place and then go home. Just go home like if nothing happened, do, keep doing your research, keep thinking about it, do your math, talk to friends, talk to people. Just just take your time because that offering is not going to go away. To me, that's, that's kind of like a tactic that people use. Oh, this offering is, if you don't come today, it's going to, it'll be there. And that's if not, exactly a tactic, you know? the urgency, creating the urgency. urgency. Definitely. Yeah. Because we were talking about t uh, tactics, and I know we didn't have a lot of time to, to talk about the uh, tactics that the con artists is use. But when they talk to people, they profile people. You know, in that conversation, they're kind of knowing about you because somebody else is going to then take that profile items and then call you and they all know about that about you because you just gave it to somebody else. The phantom riches, you know, you the desire of having uh, a lot of riches. You know, we all want to have money or be rich. So when you hear those kinds of things, they are very attractive. Or the scarcity tactic when they tell you that if you don't act now, they're not going to be here, that there's only a few left and this is a special item that you have to act now. And then you mentioned this, Linda, the fear and intimidation. That's another one when they start threatening you and putting fear in you. Another one that is very popular, extremely popular, is the source credibility. Mm -hmm. And what this is is that people will use very high high titles, very sophisticated titles to impress people. Oh, this is uh, the doctor so-and-so or the executive director of the bank and uh, with a, a PhD on this and that. And that is source credibility. What they're trying to do is just build a credibility on that source by you know giving them all kinds of titles. So it is, it is just amazing. I am so happy that we had this show. I know it's not going to be the last one because there's just a lot of fraud and scams going on. I really hope that uh, uh, this program helped you to develop your fraud prevention strategy. 
Well, I want to thank again Linda Vitale. Uh, she's a volunteer. She's a tax preparer. Uh, yes. That's how you make a File living. File your taxes early this <laughs> File year. File your taxes. And then Lenny Estrada and, and Lucia Arteaga with the AG's office. You know, uh, thank you so much for joining this uh, show. And again, if you're listening by radio, please go to our Facebook page. It is AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. We are going to start doing more Facebook lives other than the radio show. So we really want you to uh, tune in. And so, and then uh, recommend us with your friends again uh, on Facebook. Uh, AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. This was AARP Arizona Hispanic Connection. Arizona Hispanic Connection.